Bots and Only mode. Hello, traders. Good morning. This is Sean. We are beginning our Trade Ideas Beginners 101 training class. Uh, and always, and as always, I'm joined by my friend Andy. Say hello, Andy. Hey, Sean. Hey, everybody. Glad you could join us. Glad you're all, you're all here. Glad I'm here with, with you. It's been an interesting morning for me. Some service outages with my ISP, uh, but hopefully we'll be all good. If for some reason I completely disappeared during this call, well, at least you're in the good hands of Andy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for those of you who have not attended one of these Beginners 101 sessions yet, uh, the way we do this is we've got a curriculum of topics that we're going to cover. Uh, you can see here on my screen, I've got uh, the Beginners 101 curriculum with Sean and Andy. This right here, these are the topics we're going to go over. Now, these are very basic topics, very beginning topics. Uh, we are not going to cover Holly in this session. Uh, if you are looking to learn more about Holly and the, those uh, uh, that premium uh, subscription service, uh, we will be covering that in tomorrow's Beginners 201 class. So um, hopefully it doesn't disappoint anybody on this call. Uh, but we will cover a lot of great stuff. And uh, as always, there's a question box. You will be able to uh, ask us questions as we go along. If it's something uh, pertinent to what I'm talking about at the very moment, uh, Andy will chime in and, uh, and, and discuss your question and we will discuss it here on air. And um, but we will probably get through all of these topics uh, within, hopefully within the first uh, 45 minutes. And then uh, the last 45 minutes of our 90 minute call, we will just open to floor, open the floor to, to general questions, general beginners questions. Um, and uh, we'll see where that takes us. So uh, before we go too further down this road here, just want to make sure uh, that everybody can hear us and see us. Uh, if anybody can chime in on the question panel, and just kind of let us know. Yep, I hear you. I see you. That would be uh, very helpful. William, thank you. William confirms that he can hear us and see us. Fantastic. Okay, with that, we will get going. All right, so as you can see on our curriculum box we've got right here, we're gonna start with launching trade ideas. So I have a uh, basic layout open right now, but let, let's, uh, let's kind of go back and start over here. Let's, I'm just gonna close this out. I'm gonna close my trade ideas. Save my layout, yes, okay. So you're looking at my very empty desktop. Nothing going on here, but you see I got my trade ideas icon right here for the software we've got develop, uh, downloaded onto the platform on my computer. I'm just going to go ahead and double click that icon and that's going to bring up trade ideas. Very simple. And when you first log in, if, if things are looking wonky to you or if it doesn't look like you're getting any data, just really quickly uh, check your toolbar at the top and confirm that you see green bars and a green ball. Uh, if you see all that, then you should be good to go. If you have a red ball there, the, there, there might be a, a connection issue. And you could always try to reconnect by going uh, in your toolbar here, going to account and hit reset connection. Very simple. So let's start with some of the basics, uh, the, the differences between the three main building blocks of, a, of any trade ideas layout, your alert window, your top list, and your single stock window. You'll notice uh, in trade ideas in every window, there's a little letter in the upper left corner of any window. You see here, I got an A right here. I got an A there. I got a T there. That tells you what type of window you have. An A window is an alert window. A T window is a top list. Here's a top list down here. And an S window is a single stock window. So what are these windows? Let's, let's uh, take them one by one. Let's start with a, uh, I like to start with a top list. I hope that's okay with everybody else. Uh, <laughs> got a top list right here. So what a top list does it's a very simple program, but a very powerful feature. Basically, what a top list does is every 30 seconds, you can see the timestamp here. It's 10.05 a.m. where I live. I'm in the mountains. It, uh, and every 30 seconds, this top list will refresh, and it scans the entire marketplace, delivering to you stocks in this window that satisfy whatever filters you have set 
for this window. So what do I mean by that? Let's, let's dig in here. Let's get under the hood of this uh, top list and see what kind of filters we have set. And to do that, I simply right click, go to configure. And this is going to bring up my top list configure window. I'll kind of move it up here. And if I want to quickly get a snapshot of, of what is set in this window, I could just move over to the summary tab. And you will see I've got uh, currently four filters set for this window. Not a very strict window by any means, but, uh, but these are the filters I've set. So this top list is showing me stocks that are between $1 in price and $1,000 in price. So just about most stocks. The volume today has to be at least 50,000 shares traded so far today. Stocks where the volume in the last five minutes, and this is probably the key filter right here, stocks in the last five minutes are at least, um, or the volume in the last five minutes is at least 300% of normal. So Trade Ideas always knows what uh, what volume uh, specific, what, what volume should be for any stock at any minute in time throughout the trading day. We have a very robust data set. Um, that we can check this against in real time, all the time. So we know if a stock is trading, uh, if, if some, some sudden volume is coming into a stock, uh, we, can, we can tell that, hey, it's 300% above what it normally should be for this last five minute candle uh, for this stock. Uh, but that's a discussion for another time. Uh, last filter I have here is uh, stocks where the price is up at least 2% from the previous close or the price is at least down 2% down from the previous close. So these are the filters I've got set it should be, I should point out that you could create as many filters as you'd like. Yeah, I don't believe there's a uh, limit to how many you can create. Um, and and it's kind of, it's up to you as far as how granular you want to get as you're drilling into the types of stocks you like to see. But the, the, the main point here is what we're trying to show you is that these stocks here satisfy all the filters that we've got set for that top list. And it's going to refresh every 30 seconds. And I could sort by any one of these columns. If I want to see the stocks that are uh, up the most on the day, I could sort by the change from close. We got a, uh, it's a cheap stock, but we got a stock here up 179% today. Let's pull up that chart. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's, that's, quite, that's quite a move. If you, if you like those, uh, those cheap stocks, that's quite a move. So that's, that's your basic on a top list. Um, now let's move on to the alert window. Uh, I've got an alert window right here. Let's uh, let's kind of bring it up. There's not much uh, activity in there right this moment because I just launched this page. Uh, but as time goes on, alerts will filter in. Uh, so what an alert window does is alert window delivers to you a stock in this window. Uh, in fact, you know, what? maybe this is not the best alert window. Let's use this one because that particular alert, alert window is just showing me alerts uh, for the SPY. Let's, uh, let's look at this alert window here. This is gonna show us all different types of stocks. So an alert window, a stock has to, for a stock to show up in your alert window, there has to be a specific event or a trigger that takes place. And you'll see that there's a timestamp here in this column, 10.06 and 20, in, in 20 seconds. This DNLI triggered, I believe it was probably a new intraday high. Sure, there it is. You can see on my five minute chart, if I see, look for the blue arrow, it'll show me where that alert happened. Uh, you can see that stock didn't make an intraday new high. Now, I'm not seeing a whole lot of stuff in here right now. Let me just quickly pull up the history and let's just see all the alerts that this thing fired today. And you know, we'll see a lot more stocks. Give it a sec. There we go. Okay, so if I scroll back in time here a little bit, uh, the market opens where I live at 7.30 a.m. Uh, so we can go back that far. Let's go back to maybe say 8.30. So let's just, I'm gonna click this G-E-R-N. This is an alert that we had gotten. And you'll notice uh, on the uh, five minute chart I've got up here, you see the blue arrow. That shows me when I got that alert. And sure enough, that was uh, when the stock was making a new intraday high. So the point of an alert window is, you could see stocks in real time the moment they hit your trigger. And that trigger could be any number of, we've probably got a hundred, hundreds of alerts that you could choose from in trade ideas. Uh, but the alerts can be as, as basic as uh, stock making a new intraday high or stock uh, pulling back 25 cents off its low uh, or crossing above a moving average. Uh, there's lots and lots of different alerts you could choose from. But the point is in the alert window, you are going to get the alert at the exact moment that the, the trigger fires, 
But, and this is a big but, you're only gonna get that alert if the stock satisfies all of the filters you have set, much like in a top list window. So if I were to uh, go under the hood in here and check out, let's go to the configure tab or configure window and look at the filters I've got set for this alert. Let's just go right over to the summary tab. You'll see, just like in the top list, I've got a number of filters here. Uh, I got four such filters. Uh, but then I, you can see that what's new here is we got an alert, a new high. And sure enough, uh, if I actually move over to the select alerts tab real quick, just to confirm that in, in fact, we are seeing a new intraday high. If I had a number in here, say like 20, then I'd be getting an alert whenever the stock made a 20 day high, okay? But we just want an intraday high, so I'm gonna leave this blank. So if I go back to the summary tab, you'll see I'm getting alerted when a stock makes a new high, but it also has to be currently satisfying all of these filters at the same time. We're not just gonna, gonna get any old new high. Uh, the, the, the stock has to satisfy these filter sets. Uh, and you know, this all happens in nanoseconds in real time. It's not like the, the alert happens and then the computer spends a couple minutes uh, searching, <laughs> making sure it satisfies all of these filters. No, it happens in real time faster than a blink of an eye. So that is a, uh, an alert window. So again, top list refreshes every 30 seconds. It doesn't necessarily mean there's anything happening in these stocks at this point in time. The stocks could be trading sideways. They could be doing absolutely nothing. They just happen to satisfy the filters that you have set right now. And the alert window is more timely. This is a real-time alert. Well, I have it on history right now, but if I go back to real time, uh, you're gonna get, uh, when something happens, it's gonna pop up right in here uh, the moment it happens. All right, we're not, I don't see any questions yet, so that's good. I'm gonna keep plowing ahead. Uh, the next window we want to discuss was the single stock window. I've got one right here. So move this stuff here, clean up my screen a little bit. Okay. A single stock window. Uh, what this window does is it is a fully customizable window that shows you key data points that you may find interesting on any stock that you're looking at. Now, I've got a pretty basic one in here. Uh, doesn't have a whole lot of data, but that's just kind of the way I am. I like to keep things clean. I don't need a whole lot of data points for, for, for my decisions, but all these data points here are customizable. And if you want to customize these, uh, you would simply right click and go to configure. And if I go to the columns tab here, you'll see on the left-hand side, these are all the data points that I'm currently displaying over here. But if there's anything that I'd like to add, I could usually find them here on the right-hand side just find something I'm looking for, let's say short float percent or options volume today and hit the right arrow, move it over. I think I already had that over there. Um, but I could find anything that's not over here, just move it over. Or if there's something else I'm looking for that I'm not finding uh, on this side, I could do one or two things. I could click this more button or I can go over to the search tab. They kind of take you to the same place, but let's just hit more. It moved me right over to my search tab here. And now I can start typing in uh, something I'm interested in. Maybe a uh, five minute volume is uh, something I wanted to add. So I could just type in the, some, key, some, some key words. I'll find it in the search there, highlight it. And in this case, I'm gonna hit show column, okay? And now it's going to add it. It, it moved me over to my columns tab and it, uh, volume five minute, there it is. It added it right there. So you could add any number of data points you want to this window. Uh, I just have, it uh, looks like 10, but you could have much more than that. And uh, if you care about the order and how they look, you could go to this column order tab here and start moving things around. I could move the average daily volume up to the top if I wanted. I could move volume percent to today to the other side just by highlighting it, clicking the right arrow. Now it's over here. Uh, so I could change the look of it if you want. So let's hey, cancel Sean. it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Rich asked, well, what is position and range? And I know you had it, I saw it on your uh, single stock window over there on the right. So if you could maybe just uh, uh, show him, grab it and put it in there and we can kind of explain what position sure. and range is. Position and range. Let's go configure here real quick. Oh, of course, my computer is slowing down. Here we go. Let's type in position in range. If I could type. Here's position and range right there. I'm going to hit show column to add that, uh, there it is. Now let's hit okay and let's uh, let's see the data point. 
not a very sexy data point in this particular uh, window, but what this is telling you is this is showing you where the stock is in today's intraday range. Let's, let's, let me just pull up a better stock that might, has a, might have a better visual. It's a little better. So I, I just pulled up the stock for Twitter. I've got a five minute chart up here on the right. You can see it right here. And it uh, looks like it gapped down, filled the gap, and then then crapped. The old, the old gap and crap. <laughs> or, or what does Steve call this? This is the horseshoe down. This looks like yeah, one of there you go. classic horseshoe downs. So uh, you'll notice that Twitter is in the lower part of its daily range today. So what this position and range visual is really just showing you is, if you, if you kind of make a mental leap here with me, the upper end of this gray area is the high of the day, and the lower part of this gray area is the low of the day. And we are seeing that the stock is now trading down uh, it's in the lower region of its of its range today. It's uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if I did a good job explaining that, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, position and range is just showing you where the stock is today in, in relation to its overall range for for the day. I hope that uh, hope that was clear, Rich. If not, uh, let me know, and uh, if you want some more specifics, just chime in there in the question box. No problem. Oh, got it. Thanks. All, All right. right, Rich. Awesome. <laughs> By the way, that's a reminder for anybody who may be uh, tuned in late. If you do have a question about anything I'm talking about, feel free to jump into the question box, type your question, we'll see it, we'll address it, and we'll move on. Uh, we're also gonna open up the floor in the last 45 minutes of this 90 minute session to just general questions, general beginner's questions. Uh, so if you wanna hold off till then as well, you're welcome to. Yeah, I just wanna come in real quick. What does the width of the red bar and the position and range indicate. Okay, um, well, the, the width is really just showing you, uh, it's, I, I guess, I, when, it, when it's like this, when you, when you see it in this example here, the stock is down for the day and it is uh, near the lower part of the day. Now, if this were fully red, okay, which happens from time to time, this were fully red, what that means is the stock is now making a new low on the day. It is it is busting through the lower end of today's range. Mm -hmm. I don't. Know, hopefully that was uh, that was clear. Okay, Gary asks, can can you change position and range to be over last five days instead of just today? I don't believe we have a five day. Uh, let's just go into configure real quick and see what the options are. We do. Oh, I apologize. Five position in five. I think we should pull it up. Oh, there it is. Position in five day range, position in 10 day, position in 20 day. So yes, Gary, we do have uh, various um, ranges. Position in ranges. And they're, no, no, they're not customizable. You can't create a, a position in 19 day range, unfortunately, but uh, hopefully these uh, options will more than cover you. You could even get intraday. You could do a position in 60 minute range, position in 30 minute range. If you're more of a quick intraday scalper, you might find those uh, useful as well. And I would just like to add, these are these are very, very powerful filters. And I like to tell people, if you can imagine a chart in your head, you can you can pretty much build it using our position and range filters. So just keep that in the mind when you're starting to build your own alerts or top list. Uh, they can be uh, extremely powerful uh, uh, filters. Okay, Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yes, right on, Andy. Okay, so going back to our little uh, curriculum screen right here, we've, we've covered the, the A windows and T windows and S windows. Events and filters, we, we more or less covered that in our discussion of each of those windows. Now we're going to talk about some basic chart functionality. Okay, so you'll notice I've got three charts here up at the top of my screen. Uh, I've got a daily chart here. We've got a five-minute chart here. This chart here is one that I just have always open. It's always just set to the SPY, so I can just kind of keep tabs on um, what the overall market is doing today. And uh, as an FYI, the reason, the way I'm able to do that is you'll notice that whenever I click on a ticker in Trade Ideas, I'm just, I'm in this top list here, I'm clicking tickers, it automatically brings up the stocks right here on the charts. But the SPY chart stays the same. You might be wondering, well, how, how do I do that? Uh, it's a simple matter of uh, pinning the windows. So let's let's go to the stock window here. Uh, if I, you'll notice I have uh, actually it's not pinning. It's uh, symbol linking. I apologize. So 
your whenever you open up a new chart on trade ideas it's going to default to symbol linking so if i go in the properties here this symbol linking box is going to be checked and that just simply means that anytime you click a, a ticker anywhere in trade ideas you're gonna that chart's gonna be linked to it now i turn that feature off on this spy chart up here uh, so that it'll always stay on the SPY. See, I, in my properties, I do not have symbol linking checked. So now I could put any ticker in here I want. I just highlight my cursor over it and type in QQQ, and you know it'll it'll be whatever ticker I want it to be. But it's not going to change on its own unless I go in here and manually change it. It's a little sidebar. That's a question I get from time to time, and they look at my window. They're like, "How do you get that spy chart not to change?" <laughs> Uh, so there is that. Um, okay, some basic functionality of the charts. Um, let's talk about how you can kind of manipulate these. Um, if you want to change the time frames on these charts, uh, you can simply right click and go to time frame and you could select a time frame you want. Now, all of our time frames, with the exception of one, are all intraday time frames. So one minute, five minute, et cetera. And then we have a daily chart. So if you're looking for a weekly chart or a monthly chart, unfortunately, uh, we don't have that uh, on these uh, on these charts. But uh, uh, we got you we got you covered intraday for sure, and for, on a basic daily chart. Um, okay. If you want to, if you're in a chart and you want to move around, uh, let's say I just pulled up this Facebook chart. Let's say I'm in the five minutes and I want to go back. I want to see yesterday's action, or, or in this case, Friday's action. Uh, I could do a couple of things. I could simply hit the right or left arrow keys on my keyboard. I'm just all I'm doing is just hitting the right and I'm going back in time. And uh, it'll stretch out today. There we go. The chart looks kind of wonky, but that's how we went back in time. You could also just simply roll it back and forth. That's how you can go back in time. Now you could also zoom in on charts. Um, again, using your keyboard, if you hold your control key down and then use the arrow buttons, you'll see I can zoom in a little. I'm just doing that. I'm just doing arrow, a control arrow right or a control arrow left to zoom out. And likewise, if you're using a mouse and you got that spin wheel on it, you could hold the control key and just spin your wheel and you can zoom in and zoom out. So there's some basics there. Uh, we're not going to get into uh, chart indicators in this call, but for those of you on the on one of our latest beta versions uh, of Trade Ideas, we now have uh, uh, studies and indicators you can put on charts. Uh, you would simply right click in any chart and move down to this indicators option. And you can see we've got a handful of indicators you can now use, things like exponential moving average, RSI, VWAP, et cetera. Uh, any other basic chart functionality that I uh, have not uh, touched on there? Uh, maybe just go over the uh, the simple uh, markups, uh, you know, horizontal oh. line trends. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. I always forget that. Uh, yeah, so if you want to do some basic marking up of your charts, maybe you want to draw a trend line or a resistance or support level, or even want to write yourself a little note, uh, you can do that. Uh, so in any one of these charts, you simply right click and you go to markup. And let's say I want to put in a uh, uh, an overhead resistance line. I could just do this. I could choose a horizontal horizontal line. There it is. I can now manipulate it, move it anywhere I'd like on my screen. Let's say uh, I don't know. This is probably a bad example. It doesn't look like there's any overhead support right or <laughs> resistance on this one. But let's just for argument's sake, let's put that put that line there. Now I could also draw a trend line. It looks like there's a trend line that this might be following pretty good. So if I want to do that, simply right click, go to markup and select trend line and now you see this little uh, orange line here i can move this let's move it there and then manipulate it a little bit let's drag it there we go that looks like a pretty mm -hmm. reasonable trend line and there you go and now you could change these colors too if you want uh if you right click and go to uh properties or is it properties no it's markup and annotation color there you go and you could choose a different color if you want. Let's do a little blue. And there you go. I changed that trend line to blue. Mm -hmm. And finally, if you want to add a little note to yourself, uh, let's say, uh, well, we'll figure it out. But let's, let's go to markup. We'll go to uh, text annotation. And I could say, write 
a note here. Boom. Mm -hmm. Now I've got myself a little note. I can move it around anywhere I want. And there you go. And then, you know, that's useful if, if you're like me and you like to create charts and, uh, and share them on Twitter or stock twits. Uh, you can, you could mark them up and put your little notes on here so people know what to look at. Or they could just be notes to yourself. I mean, I've got, uh, uh, these notes will stay here as long as you keep them. If I, if I pull up a, a chart here, I know I got a note on from way back. Uh, look, I, I put a note over here. This is a, a swing trade that we're in on our, uh, on our Holly swing trade portfolio. I wrote a note to myself, here's where we entered. That's where we got that stock. So that'll stay there as long as I want it to. But if I ever wanna get rid of it, I could just uh, highlight it or click on it. And uh, I think I just hit delete actually. I think I just hit my delete button. Let's see, let's try it out. There you go, yep. I just hit delete. I highlight it and hit delete and it's gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now one other one other comment. Unless they've uh, changed this in a recent um, a version, uh, if you do mark up a chart and you want to save it, used to Sean, you would have to actually uh, save your layout. But I don't know if that's the case anymore with the newer version. So, um, so it's something that you might want to do um, at first, just to make sure if you want to save your markings. Go to File and Save Layout. Mm -hmm. Right. There you go. All right, what is next? Uh, the, let me check the question box real quick, see if I missed any questions. Uh, okay, Adam, external linking is not something we're going to cover here, but I can show you real quickly, um, a real quick basic, um, and if you have any trouble, you'll have to uh, uh, probably just come to trade-ideas.com, our website, and go to our, um, our live chat box here. You can get one of our texts to help you out, but uh, basically, if you want to link to another platform real quick, uh, if you go to your TI menu bar, go up to tools and external linking, choose that option. Uh, and then it's going to bring you this empty window. You probably won't have anything linked when you start. Just hit this add link button and then you're going to want to follow the instructions up here. Okay. Uh, now it, this thing can be a little wonky sometimes, and this is something we will cover, I believe in 201 class tomorrow. 301. Um, Three, I'm sorry, it gets covered in 301. See, that's a very advanced feature. Yes. <laughs> um, if you are having help with that, uh, Adam, uh, or, if you're, or if you need help with that now, um, just go to trade-ideas.com, our website, and uh, find the live chat box there, and one of our techs will get, get you up and running on that. Okay, with well, the other question from Armin is, can we do opposite linking? For example, when I click on my broker window, that symbol will show on TI charts and singles. Okay, so this is also a linking question. Um, uh, the answer is no. If you're on, uh, if you have, if you've linked your Trade Ideas platform to say your Thinkorswim platform or your E-Trade platform, and you click on a tink ticker on E-Trade, and you bring up a ticker over there, I don't believe that changes on TI. I mean, uh, Andy, you can correct me if I'm I, wrong. Yes, I don't think so either, unless things have really changed. But um, uh, yeah, no. It only works, it's, it's a one-way relationship, unfortunately. So whatever you click on TI, on Trade Ideas, will populate on your, on your trading platform, but uh, not the other way around. But again, these are uh, linking questions, and uh, we will be discussing linking on Wednesday in our 301 class a little bit more in depth for those uh, who have questions on that. It is a great feature for those who like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Armin, great. I'm glad that helped. Okay. Let's see uh, what's next. Understanding layouts versus channels. Okay, great. So what you are seeing here on my screen is a custom layout. It's a custom layout I've built. This is just a very basic one. I actually built this layout specifically for this call. Uh, it's not the one I use throughout the day, uh, but this is a custom layout. And you can have any number of custom layouts. And in fact, I could show you quickly if I go to file in my trade ideas menu bar here and I go load layout, you'll notice I have a number of different layouts that I've saved uh, over time. And I could open any one of these that I would like. Now, it's important to know that, uh, you know, most, most Trade Ideas customers, once they've spent some time with the platform, they start using it, it's part of your, your regular routine. Uh, I, would, I would argue that the majority of Trade Ideas customers have their own custom layout that they use. That custom layout has all the windows that they find most useful you know, the, the specific top list you like, the specific alert windows you like, the charts the way you like them, et cetera. Um, now, that differs from what we have along the left-hand side. I've got a channel bar open, and this shows all the various channels 
the trade ideas has created. Now these are, all these simply are is just different viewpoints or different windows into different corners of the market based on what you like. And they're already set up for you, pre-configured. So for example, if I want to go to say, uh, say uh, I don't know, the, the blockchain stocks are going crazy today or cryptocurrencies are going crazy today. I want to see if I could trade that from a stock point of view. Well, if I could click, if I click on this blockchain and cryptocurrency channel, this, uh, we've got a channel already pre-configured for you. It's showing you stocks that, uh, that have uh, some kind of exposure um, to the blockchain or cryptocurrency space. Um, and we've got a top list here uh, that's showing us, uh, let's see what it's showing us real quick. If I go to configure, it's showing us uh, stocks with the, the, the biggest change. So it's basically just sorting stocks by, uh, by their price change. Um, but the, the, the main thing that I want to discuss here with the channels versus the custom layouts is when you're on any one of these channels, whether it's the cryptocurrency channel or the pre-market channel or short squeeze, these channels always default to their factory settings, for lack of a better phrase. So what that means is, let's say I'm here on this channel and I like this channel, but I, I want to make some visual changes to it. I, uh, you know, I want my my single stock window to be up here. I'm going to move this top list down. I want this chart to be bigger. Uh, you know, maybe I want to change a parameter in, in this top list. Like I see that there's some some one dollar stocks in here. Let's say I don't like to trade stocks below ten dollars in price. I could go in and you know make a change. If I go into the configure, I can make some changes to the filters. And let's say I've made those changes, and now this window. This blockchain channel looks exactly the way I want it to look. Well, that's great, but if I ch change channels right now, say I go to the social media channel or I go to one of my own custom layouts, and then I come back to this blockchain channel, it's going to look like it looked like originally. It's not gonna look like my changes here, okay? So what you need to do, well, there's a couple things that you're gonna wanna do. If you're on a channel that you like, let you make some changes to it. There's two things you should do. Number one, and the most obvious is you should save this as your own custom layout. So we've made some changes. We've made some visual changes, move things around. This is the way I like it now. Maybe I've even added a third chart. Let's go new and uh, chart window. So this is my blockchain channel. This is the way I like it to be. Well, let's just go ahead and save this as a layout. Okay. Let's go up to file, save layout. And let's give it a name. Let's call it uh, Sean's Crypto Channel. Okay. I've just gone ahead and typed that in. That's my name for the channel. Now I'm going to hit save. And now I'm just going to need to remember that anytime I want to go to the blockchain channel, instead of going into the channel bar and clicking the factory default, I am going to access my own custom version. So let, let's just, let me show you what that is. So remember what this looks like right now. This is the new blockchain channel. I'm just going to change channels real quick. I'm going to go to pre-market. And I'm, as soon as this all loads, I'm going to go right back to the blockchain channel that is the, the factory default. So if I go ahead now and click blockchain channel, you'll see that all those changes I made previously are now gone. It's now back to its original setting. But this is not, the, this is not what I like. I want the one that I created after I made all my changes. Well, luckily we saved that layout. And to find my custom layouts, I just go up to file, load layout, and here it is, Sean's crypto channel, right there. Let's open it up. And then now here is the crypto channel with my changes the way I like it. So I tell people, look, these channels are wonderful features for quickly getting some ideas that are maybe outside of uh, your normal workflow or finding uh, you know, different uh, stocks you might not normally trade. Um, and they're great for that, but if it, but if you, if it's a channel that you think you're going to be visiting often, and but you have your own particular ways of the way you want it to look, then make your changes, and then make sure you file save layout, okay, so that you have that custom layout available to you at any time. Now that's kind of the broad overview of doing that. Now the next the other option you could do is whenever you go to these channels, let's open up the say uh, the the Alpha Predator channel. Let's say I don't really care for this layout or anything on it, but I, but it has one small thing I like. I like this top list right here. This action heating up top list is fantastic. I, I, I find great stocks to trade in here. It's been good to me. 
uh, whatever the case may be. Well, you don't want to always have to come to this channel because you don't care about all this other stuff. You just want this top list. Well, you could grab this top list, save it to your cloud, and then open it up on any one of your custom layouts. And the way you do that is simply find the window you like. So in this case, this action is heating up. Let's right click. I'm going to hit save or share to cloud. Uh, the name of it's right here in the bottom. I'm just going to kind of clean up the numbers here. This window is called the action is heating up 101. I'm just going to put that because I know it's for the 101 class. I'm going to hit save. And now this top list is in my cloud. Now, if I wanted to uh, open this up in any of my custom layouts, I would simply open up one of those custom layouts. Let's go to File, Load Layout. I'm going to open up my uh, Beginners 101 class. There it is, or Beginners 101 Layout. And now let's add, oh, uh, ironically, I already had a uh, yeah. action heating up. Window. Let's pretend you didn't see that. <laughs> uh, and I want to now add, that, um, add the window that I just saved from the other uh, channel. I simply go to, I could go to my cloud in the channel bar. I could click this button, or I could go to file, load from cloud. They both go to the same place. Let's go load from cloud. And action heating up 101 right there at the top. That's the thing I most recently saved. It's right here at the top of my screen. Just highlight it, click load, and look at that. It opens up right here on my layout. I could find a home for it. Let's put it right here. And now I've got it. It's always going to be here as long as I make sure I save this layout now with this window. So. Best practice, whenever you make changes to your layouts, if it's something you want to keep, make sure you always go up to File and Save Layout to save your work. I could just hit Save, and it's going to rewrite everything I have. Uh, or I could even give it a new name and have it be a new layout if I want. But I would hit Save. It's going to ask me, do I want to replace it? I'll hit Yes if I want to, but in this case, I don't want to. All right, so um, just to reiterate, and this, this trips up a lot of new people from time to time, uh, these channel bars, these channels on the channel bar are fantastic tools to not only just get quick glimpses of certain things in the market, like this pre-market channel is always great uh, before the market opens to, to quickly identify stocks that are setting for a big gap up or a big gap down. Uh, you'll, you'll see where the action's likely going to be, at least in the opening of trading. Um, but any changes you make here, if you do make changes, they are not going to save on this channel. If you, if you make changes and you want to keep them, I'm just reminding you to either save it as a layout, as your own custom layout, or take whichever window that you made changes to that you want to keep, just save that particular window to your cloud, and then open that up on any of your custom layouts. Our question box is empty, so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, Andy. I'm going to say, I'm going to say that we must be doing an okay job. If exactly. Has a question. exactly. <laughs> One other thing, while you have this, uh, 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 channel up Sean we just added I told Steve we did just added it because we forgot to uh, put uh, ideas uh, ide surfing in one of the topics so real quickly uh, why it's running right now just kind of go over I idea surfing and, and how to pause it and all that and it's pretty oh, simple. sure sure so yeah you may have noticed uh, if I'm, I'm not really doing anything on my platform right now but every few seconds these charts change uh, you know it'll, it'll happen here in, uh, in a, another Few seconds. I don't know how long it is. Maybe it's, maybe it's 15 seconds. But uh, but we oh, excuse me. But we have <laughs> a feature here called uh, Idea Surfing. And so if I do nothing on the platform at all, uh, these charts are going to update every 30 seconds or so. And and what probably it's doing? Seconds, I think. I think okay. It's and it's finding stocks from the top list and alert windows that you have uh, open on your screen. So you'll notice this AMTX is what we're looking at right now. That's a stock found right here on this uh, top list down here. The down gappers. So it's going to cycle through these top lists and and just kind of change the chart for you. Uh, it's for people that uh, you know. Uh, the, the, there's a school of thought here. Uh, I think it, Dan puts it best. It's like, hey, these charts are speaking to your subconscious, <laughs> right? <laughs> so they're flipping for you. And hey, you might see something. It might make an imprint on your brain, and uh, you know, you might be able to recall it later when you need it. But uh, uh, you know, it's a nice feature for people who like this kind of thing. If you don't like it, you could always turn it off. Uh, there's two ways to do that. You can go up in your toolbar up here and you see where it says currently idea surfing. If I click that, it'll just toggle it to paused and now nothing will, nothing will update. The only way charts will change is if I click a different ticker, uh, that'll bring up a different chart. Or if I actually go into the chart myself and just start typing, uh, you know, typing a ticker, that'll change it. But right now you see I got sur idea surfing paused. 
The other way, if you are somebody who absolutely does not like this feature at all, don't ever want to see it again, <laughs> you could uh, you could uh, go into your tools here and go to options and go to, oh, it's right here on general. Uh, enable ideas surfing right here. I've got it checked so I can use it, but if I uncheck that, then that will just permanently turn off that feature. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna leave it on because I, I like it, I guess. I guess uh, I agree with Dan. It somehow uh, speaks to my subconscious. <laughs> so, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. A Andy, thanks for mentioning that. We should uh, add that to the uh, yeah, curriculum here for, for next week. Like okay. Working off your own doc there. So uh, yeah, I got my own doc. I I, I went I went rogue. I did the same thing. Yeah, it's easier. Uh, Rich, <laughs> okay, asks, is there any way to open more than one layout at a time? Answer: No, there yes. is not. Um, and that, that is a common question we get, especially for people who have uh, multiple monitor layouts or uh, workstations, I should say. If, you, if you're one of those, if you're one of those guys that's got four monitors up on your workstation and, and yeah, we get that request. I'd, I'd love to have one layout on one monitor and one channel open on another monitor. And yeah, that would be great. But unfortunately, um, we cannot do that. Now, you could move windows around you could like build a really large layout with a lot of windows and then you could start moving them over to different windows. I can't really visually show that to you here, um, but you could spread them out, uh, but they all will be part of one large layout. Right, Andy? I mean, that's Correct. Only Correct. the best way to explain that. Yeah, it's, if you're using four monitors, you can move these windows to each monitor you want. And just remember, you just basically save that layout. You know, if it's your default layout, save it as your default uh, so you can, uh, there's there's big huge advantages to having free floating windows versus a container window. So with free floating windows, you can pretty much build whatever you want. But uh, no, you cannot have uh, uh, multiple layouts open at once. You'll just have to create that layout that you want and save it under a different name. There you go. All right. Next topic. Uh, we actually kind of covered this already. Shopping mm -hmm. for scans using cloud in the channel bar. This was uh, what we were talking about when we were on different channels. And you find something you like, you just save it to your cloud and uh, then you'll have access to it anywhere and you can open those windows. And, and that's great. I mean, especially for people who are very new to the platform. Um, you know, you get, we get a lot of people that come to the platform uh, and they're not exactly sure what it is they want trade ideas to do for them. They know it's powerful. They know it can do a lot, but they don't really know. Do I, do I want to look at stocks or up gappers? I want to look at stocks or having a volume surge. I want to look at, cryptocurrency stocks. So they find that cruising through these channels and finding different things that, that appeal to them for, for on whatever level, uh, it's, it's a great place to find ideas and, and save those ideas uh, or save those windows so that uh, you can build your, you know, begin building your own custom layout that has the things that most matter to you. And look, just like anything, just like any software product, just like your trading platform, when you first open that up the first time, or even in the first week, you're probably eyes glossing over because there's just so many features and so much stuff to do. And look, you're not gonna figure everything out in the first week, it's just impossible. There's just too many features, too much to do. Um, but uh, a, a best practice or a word of advice is, is find those one or two, you know, quickly find those one or two things that, that really work for you, that you understand and can wrap your head around and, and make those one or two things as best as you can as ideal for you as you can, and then branch out from there. And shopping for different scans and alert windows on, on the different channel bars is a great way to kind of begin that process. All right, well, we've got a question came in from Bruce. Let's see, any plan to let us fix surfing to just one table or alert window? That's a good question, Bruce, and I don't have an answer to that. I don't know if Andy does. Yes. It will be, uh, it's something I, I've been told we're going to add in the future where you can basically customize your surfing uh, to where if you had a watch list of, say, 30 stocks, it would uh, you'd be able to point uh, the surfing to that. There's no ETA on that. We do have a lot of, you know, irons in the fire, but I, I was told it's going to be more customizable in the future. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I, I would like that myself. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Uh, another question came in from Armin. Is the T window the best one for a watch list, a list of symbols to monitor and go through? Um, it, it's it's a good watch list. A, a, t, a T window can be a good for a watch list. I don't know if I'd call it the best. I mean, that's uh, your own interpretation. But one thing you might want to talk about, and this is something that we cover 
and the beginners 201 tomorrow on Tuesday, but we have uh, a new channel called the My Like Symbols channel. Okay, and I'll just quickly go over this real quick. And by the way, to, to have access to this, you need to be uh, downloaded, uh, have, have one of our latest beta versions downloaded to have access to the My Life Symbols. But real quickly, you'll notice in any chart, uh, there's, a, there's a little heart in the upper left corner. If I wanna add this ticker to my watches, I just simply click that heart and activate it red. And now it's on my watch list. And I can now view my watch list by going to the My Life Symbols channel and there's a top list on this channel right here and this top list shows me every stock that i currently have on my watch list every stock that's hearted hearted red <laughs> okay um so that's that's pretty simple that's how you do it and i'll just uh here's the cdtx that's the one i just added and if i ever want to remove a stock from my watch list i just simply go in and toggle off that heart i just click it again and it goes empty Mm -hmm. So that's that's probably the easiest way to do watch lists. Uh, I find that to be a very easy and uh, a fun feature. Um, hopefully you do as well. Uh, yes, sir. And to add to that, uh, Armin, what, what you want to do is think about uh, you know what you're trying to do with uh, with a watch list or uh, an A window versus a T window. And what I like to do is think about is 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 a T window a top list is more of a scan because you're not being uh, alerted in real time. Remember, there's no there's no alert in a, a T window. You can have filters in an A window, but you cannot have alerts in a T window, which means you're building just building parameters um, and then it's all or none. So any stock that fits those parameters, when you add all those filters, they're going to appear in your top list. So if you just, if you have a top list, say a, a, a watch list of 30 stocks and you want them all, to all be seen on your T window, I would recommend using very few filters you don't have to use any filters and just create a, a columns columns can be very powerful I'm going to talk about that I think in 301 but uh, uh, and maybe Steve some tomorrow but uh, yeah just keep that in mind an, an A window is, is when you want to be alerted uh, what, what an A stands for on something and, and act quickly upon it because it does have a timestamp uh, and a price uh, you might want to go with an A window, but if you're looking to just keep an eye on a watch list and see where it may be tracking, uh, uh, just uh, use use the top list. Very good, Andy. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we got a bunch of questions coming no, in, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Rich, uh, is there a way to copy multiple stocks in a T window to a new window? Uh, I'm trying to think. Well, let's see. Are you almost? Are we almost done with the um, uh, curriculum here, or we? Uh, yeah, I mean, really, the, the biggest thing we have left to get to cover is uh, building a, a simple alert. That's it. Mm. Okay. Uh, yes, Rich, you can. Um, what you can do, if if Sean wants to show you real quick, say that uh, that my like symbols T list at the bottom. If uh, you can hold your control key down uh, and and drag your uh, cursor. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Well, no, just just oh. grab it. Oh, there, you go. there you go. There you go. So let's say he wanted to send those to another list. And this is getting more advanced and we're going to cover it in the future. Uh, but you can go right click and then send to and symbol list. And so he could send all those symbols to any one of his symbol lists that he wanted to. So, yeah, that's the way you do it. Just remember to to, to go to where this, the column where the symbol is and hold the control key down and then left click and drag and you can copy as many as you want. There you go, yeah, so yeah. all I'm doing is I'm just clicking this, like if I wanna click the, if I wanna grab FITB all the way down, I just simply click FITB, hold my shift key, and then drag Yeah, yeah shift key, I'm sorry. Was, is it shift No, 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 I'm sorry, no, it is control, it is control, okay. my bad. Okay. Yeah, and then I right click and go send to symbol lists, and these, these are the symbol lists that I currently have, your list will look different, of course, um, but these are the symbol lists I have, uh, and that's how you can do it. All right. Thanks, Andy. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do we else we have? Some question from Greg. To add average true range to all the screeners, do I have to go through all the screeners one by one to add ATR? Or is there a way to get ATR on all screeners some other way? Well, Greg, um, you're not going to be able to um, add a filter or an alert to all alerts retroactively. Um, you'll have, if, if you have a, a number of alert windows open, you'll have to go through each one and add that filter. Now, 
there is a way to build uh, an alert window uh, that has ATR in it and then kind of save that as a default so that every time you create a new alert window, it has that in there. I think I'm on base with that, Andy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so if I was creating, let's if I went to scratch, and actually this is a good uh, way to just jump into, we wanted to build a super simple alert next on our curriculum, so let's do that. So if I wanted to build an alert from scratch, I would go to new, I would select alert window, okay? And uh, we're just gonna hit start from scratch. So there's a bunch of presets in here, but we're just gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna double click start from scratch. And I'm just gonna go into my window specific filters tab we're here real quick, just kind of clean this up. I got a bunch of un nothing being used right now. So let's clear that out and select alerts. I'm gonna hit uh, hide unused here as well. So now we got a clean slate. Uh, all right, so ATR, let's talk about that. When you're building an alert window, or for that matter, a top list, uh, whatever you're looking for as far as alerts and filters, you go to the search tab, and this is where kind of where all the magic happens, where everything starts. So I'm looking for an average true range. So if I type in ATR here in the uh, filter box, that's not going to do it. But if I type in average true range, there we go. So there's our filter. Let's highlight that. I'm gonna hit add filter and we could set some parameters here. Let's say a minimum of, uh, I want a minimum of 50 cents and no more than, uh, I don't know, $5. It's probably a pretty, <laughs> pretty wide uh, range, but let's just, we'll, we'll set that. And so now I've got average true range set as a filter. Now, um, Oh, okay. So what we're Andy, just remind me. I'm gonna I'm gonna create this alert window, and then when it's all cr uh, create uh, uh, saved, or when it's all done, that's when we go in and set it as, or, or duplicate. Right? We use the duplicate feature. Oh yes, if you wanted to build uh, more alerts with the same, uh, you know, same same filters. Uh, right. I'm trying sure. to yeah, I'm trying to address Greg's question here while doing the uh, building the thing here at the same time. Um, well, I, I would so, just go ahead. I would just go ahead and build it first, and then and then yeah. afterwards you, you can show them how to, how you can duplicate the the whole the, the whole window. Sounds mm -hmm. good. All right, so we're doing this alert config window. We, so far, we've only added one filter. Let's, let's also, for price, let's say we don't want to trade uh, stocks below $5 and uh, we don't want to trade anything more than $1,000. Sorry, Amazon, can't trade too, <laughs> too big. Uh, okay, so we can add any number of filters we want uh, by just going, always going back to the search tab and uh, let's do a, a volume filter. I uh, just type in volume, then you'll see I got a number of different uh, things here. I, I like the relative volume. That's a that's a big one for me. I'm going to select that, hit add alert, and relative volume just simply means it's a ratio. So a relative volume of one means that current trading volume is exactly trending exactly according to average. Um, the, the stock is on track to have an average trading volume day. If I do say a 2.5 minimum, this is telling me this is going to show me stocks that are trading. 2.5 times their normal average daily volume for this time of the day, okay? So I like to have, um, let's just keep it simple, do a relative volume score of 1.5, so at least we're trading above average volume. And we could add one more, uh, we could add any number of filters we'd like, but uh, let's uh, let's put one more in here. Let's do, um, I like that. Daily volume is a good one, so you're not average. trading stock here. There we go, average daily volume, we'll choose the uh, three month option. Hit add filter. Let's do. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I like five hundred thousand. I think is my mm -hmm. my minimum comfort level. Mm -hmm. So there we go. We got a bunch of filters. Now we still need to set an alert. We haven't done that yet. Let's say these are my, the basic filters that I've got. But now I, I want to trade stocks that uh, the alert I want is uh, a new intraday high, real basic. Well, let's go back to search tab. Let's type in new high. Oops. Wow. That was. A, weird thing my computer just did and now i can't seem to delete i don't know what had happened there <laughs> backspace button is not working uh oh <laughs> all right you know what might have just happened here andy this is a crazy thing first time ever i think my the battery on my keyboard may have just died oh really <laughs> <laughs> which is funny i mean this is a i mean this is a relatively new computer i bought this computer uh eight months ago or so and i've never actually had to replace the batteries in this keyboard so this would be a first time no problem. If you don't, if you don't have it there, then 
not a whole lot you can hey, don't break your keyboard. I hear some clattering and clanging. Yeah. About. <laughs> I'm pulling the batteries out to see if I can. <laughs> hey, no problem. If, uh, if not, uh, you can just, we, I can just take over and we can, we can, it looks like you. Yeah, see, my mouse works. My mouse oh. is working just fine, but I can't type. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. No problem. Uh, you, you're not, you, even if you have batteries around, you don't want to uh, uh, go grab them. Uh, let me get my uh, layout set up over here, and uh, yeah, it should be fine. And I'll well, just take the, over. The good news is, is we've just about finished the curriculum yeah, part of yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thing. So now for we're sure. going to jump into the, the Q&A and, uh, yeah, and yeah, absolutely. So let me just let me just grab it real quick. No, no use you sitting there fighting with that. So <laughs> no problem, Sean. Uh, we'll, well, you uh, know, my, uh, my, my Mac. So right now, the computer you see, this is my uh, uh, my PC. But uh, on my Mac, uh, my Mac gives me alerts when my battery power on my keyboard and mouse are about to uh, die. But uh, apparently my PC does not. This is a first time <laughs> for me. No problem. No problem. Let's uh, let's just finish out what you were talking about there. And uh, what I was talking about is building a new A window. Uh, and when you first open it up, you're probably going to have some pre-configured uh, windows in here. I'm sorry, uh, alerts and events or filters, I should say. Uh, and you want to get rid of those. OK, what you want to do is just go to start from scratch. Just simply click on that a couple of times until you see the orange arrow. That will notify you that everything's been wiped clean. Uh, and what Sean did so well uh, describing earlier today is the difference between alerts and filters. And guys, an easy way to remember that is just remember that an, an alert is an event. Okay, it's something that triggers a timestamp and a price. Okay, whereas a filter is something that you build your parameters you use to build your parameters. So that is why you will have filters in an A window, but you won't, will not have alerts in a T window. Okay, so guys, Sean was also telling you the search function uh, is very powerful. This is what you, you're gonna find yourself using a lot because we have so many things to choose from that to just try to scroll through them all, it it's, can be mind boggling. So what you wanna do is, you know, if you're looking for Bollinger Bands, uh, just start typing, and there you go. It'll pull up everything we have associated with uh, Bollinger, Bollinger, however you not like to pronounce it. Um, but example he was giving is a new high. So let's just type in new high, and you will see it there. You click on it, and you're going to add alert. You always, it's a double confirmation when it comes to alerts, okay? So you will also have to put a little check mark in the box next to your alert. Um, and the bigger box on the right here, this is used is, is kind of a, if you were looking for stocks hitting a, maybe a 20 day high or a 50 day high, whatever value you put in this box here, that is the number of highs in other words daily highs that would have to be hitting so this would have to be hitting a 50-day high if i put 200 it would have to be a 200-day high if you leave it blank it is defaulted to intraday high only so in his example he was using um uh an intraday high so we're just going to leave it right. blank yeah and then we're going to go over to one uh, window specific filters real quick and i think he had price in there at uh, five to 1,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he had relative volume. And you can use abbreviations in here too. So if you just want to hit rel vol, you can use abbreviations, it'll pull it up. We're going to add filter. I believe he had it set at 1.5. Yep. Okay, and average daily volume. Once again, I'm just going to type in D-A-I-V-O-L and use a three month add filter and he had half a million i believe yeah and then uh, and then for for greg's sake let's let's add an average uh average true range oh, filter there you go. Here. that's right about okay that. so average true range in dollars and i believe you had in there like 50 cents to five dollars is that correct or that's correct your memory right. is amazing <laughs> andy <laughs> All right, so. Thanks for recreating all this stuff for me. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and, and when we get to uh, later on, guys, in, in, in 301, I'm going to show you how to, you know, better 
refine your uh, alerts to where using those position and range that Sean was showing you earlier and things like that. But right now we want to keep it basic. And what you want to learn to do at first is just work across the tabs across the top. All right. So we have our alert and we have our filters in here for now. Let's go over to exchanges. This is defaulted to always be on the four major exchanges we have in the U.S. here. Uh, I would just recommend leaving it on that. Some people do, do like to try it, OTC, pink sheets. Uh, there's some idiosyncrasies when it comes to that, so just be careful. Uh, you'll, get the, you'll get the alert in real time, but the data will be lagging by 20 minutes. So it's to make it easier on yourself, I would recommend just not, not trading those, uh, but some people like to, so we... Uh, do we do have it but uh symbol list uh that's not i don't think we're gonna i don't think we cover that in your section do we no i think steve goes over that tomorrow yeah that, that's definitely a more advanced feature mm -hmm. we'll go over this one tomorrow uh columns these are the columns that are going to you're going to have across the top of your alert window all right we always have five defaulted over to the left side for you, I would recommend maybe taking out description if you're pretty good at reading charts because it is kind of wordy and can take up a lot of screen real estate. But in this example, let's add some important columns because uh, relative volume was in there. We know it has to be at least 1.5. Well, I want to see if it's up around four or five. Uh, Average true range, where did that go? Let's see, it should be in here. It should be there somewhere. There it is. There it is. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add that as a column. I always like adding volume in the five minute, and so if you can't see it, you can always use your search, search functions to find columns as well. You just gotta remember, do not add a filter, just go to show column, and it will drop it in there for you. All right, so that's pretty pretty good right here. Summary, you always got to go over summary, check your work. We've got a new high alert. We've added four filters. They're all there. We're going to add this, maybe call it uh, uh, new high uh, with ATR filter. And click OK. We'll launch your alert. And what myself and Sean always like to do when we build an alert, we like to go and see how effective it might have been during the day. The way to do that is right click in the window, go to history and just put it on today. And you're going to see every stock that came through there today. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So there we go. Yeah. Now let's um, just real quick for Greg. Um, he wanted to remember he wanted to have that, that as a, set as a default, or if you wanted to oh, build multiple right. alert windows that have the ATR filter mm -hmm. already set. In this case, uh, you would just basically duplicate this window, right? Mm -hmm. Sean is correct. Now you have to remember you you're, you're duplicating. So if you wanted to add this to a top list, you're going to have to actually create a whole new top list because. Uh, you, and in reality, uh, Greg, what you're going to do is once you once you build the alert, the A window or T window for the first time, and you save it to your cloud, that it's you have it forever. Uh, so even if you do have to go through and add, you know, it's it's you're only talking about you know maybe a 30 minute job, or and and then you're going to have it forever. So I, I don't think you should get too caught up in trying to duplicate all the same filters, but. What he's talking about is you can duplicate this window. Now I have the exact window right here. And if I wanted to go in and change um, the configuration, but keep the ATR window, I could just go into, oh, I'm sorry, the ATR filter. I could just go in here and maybe now I'm looking for a new low. Uh, I can go click on new low, add alert. I can take it off the new high, new low. And I still have my same filters over here hide unused and you still see I have the the same filters if you wanted to come in and change the you know add some more filters you could or remove something uh, maybe you don't care about a, on this new one the relative volume uh, and you can add some more filters but uh, what Sean is saying and it's actually a good idea this would be a way that you could uh, you know keep your same filters and build more windows around it more a windows but you're going to have to do the same thing for a T window.
So, right. right. Well, Greg, I hope we answered your question there. I'll let us know if, if there's any part of that that's unclear. Um, and now for the rest of us uh, here, we've uh, thankfully, we, thankfully we got through all the uh, curriculum that we had to before my keyboard went kibbutz. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now for the, we have uh, about 25 minutes left on this training session, and this is when we like to uh, open up the floor to any general beginner's questions. So if you're, you're sitting on a question you'd like to ask, um, please feel free to start uh, typing your questions, and we will kind of get them in order as best we can. Mm-hmm. And uh, Armin, I, I'm yeah, I, I see that you got the point as as far as um, you know a top list. Yeah, that's a that's a great great way to do it is using a top list when you want to keep your eye on uh, on uh, a watch list like this right here is basically my sector analysis. These are ETFs that kind of break down the sectors that I like to follow, and it's a simple top list and because I want everything to appear in this, I don't have any filters in here, okay? And let me show you. If I go to the configuration, you are going to see, hopefully here in a second, window specific filters, I have nothing, nothing in here. You don't have to use any filters or alerts to have a window. So essentially what you're doing is you're creating a symbol list like you would do Armin for your top list. And you see, I have mine on my sector ETFs, okay? And this will be covered tomorrow with Steve, so don't worry if you're not getting it all today. But I, what I do want to show you here is I have a window here with no, obviously it's a T window, so there's no alerts in it. And I don't have any filters in it either, but I'm still getting data. And you say, why is that? It's because all the data is being presented in the columns. So if I go to configuration, and take a look at columns. I have changed from close. I have changed in 20 days, position and year range. So these are not filters, they're columns. But it's a very creative way to create yourself a watch list and then use the power of columns to follow that watch list without having any filters in it. As the market dives again to lows, oh, it's a brutal day. Ah. Yeah, it's getting slippery out there. Yeah, it is. So anyway, yeah, that's, uh, I'm glad you asked that question, Armin, because uh, top list is a way for you to create a watch list and, and not have to put any filters at all. Oh, good. I'm glad you got it. You're welcome, Armin. All right. Looks all like right. Greg's good, too. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, good, Greg. I'm glad you... Uh, I'm glad you got it. Yeah, keep that in mind, guys, because it can, it can get confusing. Uh, just remember, columns are will always appear the data will always appear in your in your uh your grid here so don't feel like you have to use any alerts or filters if you just want to display data <clears throat> well the floor is open so if anyone's sitting on a question they'd like to have answered uh please uh please chime in and uh yeah Yep. <laughs> what what a day it's been for me, Andy. I mean, oh, earlier wow. with my internet outages, and now I've got a keyboard <laughs> where the, the the battery dies on it. Unbelievable! What a day. <laughs> they're not all like this, right? They're no, no, like they're this. not. They're not. But uh, hey, you, we 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 got through it. That's the important thing. And uh, <laughs> hopefully, your internet uh, problem is. Uh, yeah, the internet seems to be solved. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I, I live in a small mountain town in Colorado, and. Uh, it's uh, the internet here is 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 usually pretty damn good, but every so often, out of out of the blue for no reason, we'll have a a little outage, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, as you know, they they're never when you want them to be. They're never, <laughs> exactly, you know, they're, they're never not, two yeah. in the morning when you're sleeping, no, right? That's always no. when you need them up. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Rich asked about the, the computer specs. The, that you, it's very very basic, Rich. I mean, I uh, I've heard of people, you know running this on 10 year old laptops uh, uh, it's it's not heavy at all uh, our our software and um, uh, I don't yeah, you know, know that the, the reason being the reason being is that most of the or all the heavy lifting of all the data that you, that you see is done on our side on the mm -hmm. server side really if there's any one feature or, or spec for your computer that you want to have you know the best possible uh, it really just comes down to internet speed right I mean as long as you got fast internet, you're going to get fast data. There's really nothing on your computer that's going to slow down trade ideas unless it's a really, really old computer. Um, 
But yeah, all, all the heavy lifting, all the data calculations, all the charts, everything is done on the server side. On our side, and we just kind of feed it, we just pump it to you over the internet. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So as so, long as you got fast internet, you're good. Yep, exactly. But yeah, but unless you're on a like a you know Commodore 64 or something like that, I think <laughs> you're, I think you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> just don't be running a AOL dial-up internet. Uh, you should be okay. Okay, Marsh has got a. Oh boy! Oh boy! Uh, what is that? Oh. Just came into our window. <laughs> <laughs> be, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, pardon us, guys. We're reading this here. Mm -hmm. Marsh, I, I believe you cut and pasted our definition from our definitions page. If I'm, I, if I recognize the uh, language there. No, I didn't. Okay. No. Okay. Let's see. Okay, Marshall, I'll just have to look, I'll have to look into that and uh, maybe it's something, you know, we can add. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything in my uh, range here, my sector analysis, you know, I, I do know this, that it, if it, if it is on like a low, I think it is colored, uh, like if it's, uh, let's see if I can find anything, uh, position in your range. GDX, so we can see GDX is close to a one-year low, but uh, it's not there. Uh, and I, I'm pretty sure that if this were to go to a one-year low, this GDX, for example, uh, Marsha, that this this whole cylinder would be um, uh, solid red. Uh, but uh, we'll we'll look into that. I, uh, yeah, and see uh, the width of the red or green bar compares the day's range to the five-day range. I think what she's saying, Marsha, and, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're looking at one of those position and range bars and you see some some gray area, right, uh, then that means that that range, uh, the stock is currently within that range. So it's, it's lower than it's high and it's higher than it's low, right? Now, if you see a bar that's fully green or a bar that's fully red, that means the stock is now busting through, either on the upside or the downside, uh, the range of the period in question. So here we're looking at a position in the year range, right? So if I look at that XLU ticker down there on Andy's screen, you see a little bit of red. So it's uh, it's in the lower, you know, 25% of its uh, of its yearly trading range, but it's not making new lows. It's not breaking through the low of the yearly range. If that bar was all completely red, then that would mean XLU is now trading making a new low, basically breaking through the, the yearly range. I hope that ex, uh, explains what, what you were looking for. I'm mean, trying to find something that, um, uh, okay, there you go. So this GE right here, position in 10 day range, you can see this GE is now on a 10 day low. That's why you have a solid red cylinder. Okay. Now, if I go up here to GE and the position in year range, okay, it's, it's there, but you can see it's still, it looks like it's all the way there toward the low, but it's not. You can, if I hover over it, you can see it's still 0.6% away from its yearly range. I can also see this on the chart. Now, if this were to go today and take out the lows in early March, this, this too would be color solid red, just like the position in 10 day range. So I think that should make sense there, Marsha. So even though a cylinder may look like it's on a full range low, it's not. I mean, we can, and that's why we added this probably because even though you cannot see the minute sliver of gray <laughs> right here, uh, it would, it would, you'd, it would notify you by this not whole cylinder not being solid red like it is on the 10 day range. Obviously, this is on a 10-day low. Yeah, Marsha writes in, fully green means the stock has moved the entire range for the five-day period for the filter. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that's a that that's right. We have, we have the correct understanding, so it looks like we're good. 
Thank you, Marsha. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we got that. We got a new question here from Melissa. Uh, she says, I just updated to the new version and don't have the heart function on the charts. Is there another way to add tickers I like? Reach out to support. Well, if you've updated the latest beta version, you should have uh, uh, did the beta version. Uh, yeah, Melissa, if you want to real quick, if you go up to your TI menu bar and click on um, about, um, and you can show you, or uh, help, yeah, help and then about, that'll tell you what version you're running. Um, if you could just let us, if you could just type in uh, what, what version you got, uh, we'll let you know if that's the right version. But any, any of our beta versions now, I believe you should, uh, you should have that feature. Mm -hmm. And if you go to our products page, okay, this is the one you want, okay? The 4.2, go ahead and anytime you see our beta version on the products page, go ahead and grab it because we guinea pig this thing for several weeks before we will actually put it on our uh, uh, our website. So it's a tendency for everybody to go and, and do the production version, but trust me, it's best to go ahead and do the, the pro beta. Yeah, and, and Melissa yeah. did confirm that she's running our production version. So yeah, you're going to want to update to the to the newest version, Melissa, and then you'll have uh, that feature as well as many more new features that you'll you mm -hmm. might find interesting. And just go to trade ideas trade dash ideas dot com and select the products uh, tab at the top, and uh, and then just make sure you scroll down to the beta version. It's going to be about you can see my scroll bar is about oh I don't know two thirds of the way down. Okay, Melissa's oh, good. All right. Well, you got 13 minutes left, closing in on last call. So uh, please, if you have questions, don't hesitate, don't be shy. Uh, we're here for you. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe this is a good time to remind everyone who's listening now, these classes at the beginning of this month in March, and we are doing these classes every day of the week. On Mondays, we do this 101 session. On Tuesdays, we do a beginner's 201 session. On Thursdays, we do an intermediate 301 session. And on Thursdays, we do the advanced 401. Uh, and then Friday is just kind of a catch-all live two-hour Q&A session where no question is off limits. Everything is fair game. Um, so there are plenty of opportunities for you to get additional help at Trade Ideas. And the beauty is, is you can come back as often as you'd like. You can come in and check out, check us out every week if you'd like uh, until you get to that point where you feel like you too are a trade ideas pro. And then you can put Andy and I out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to do that, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, if we don't have a, you'll give it another couple of minutes here and, um, and then we'll, uh, just uh, sign off here because we do have uh, three other classes coming this week. So don't feel like if you don't get your questions uh, answered, uh, how much do they pay? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, good one. They, uh, they pay us in back rubs and sandwiches. There we go. <laughs> uh, also, I guess maybe we should point out too that there are additional ways you can help uh, outside of these calls as well. Uh, during trading hours, if you have something specific you need help with, you can always go to trade-ideas.com and we have a live chat function there right in the lower right corner of the screen. You'll see an orange button. Uh, you can get somebody on the line pretty quickly to either answer your question or steer you in the right direction. Uh, you could always email us info at trade-ideas.com with anything more advanced or questions about your account. Um, so number of ways to get help. So don't be, don't be shy. Oh, we got a question coming from Adam. Mm -hmm. He says, is there a way of bringing all the windows up from the toolbar mm -hmm. when they are minimized? Yes, yes, there is. Yes, Adam, and I will show you the easiest way to do that. And this is a very good question uh, is uh, go to your toolbar. If you want to collapse everything together, okay, and just find the minimized little uh, sign there and just drop everything down. All right, and to pull it back up, all you got to do is go to trade ideas in the taskbar, find your toolbar again, it should be at the very top, and just pull it right back up. And that's the way to do it.
That's the way. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Doing it one by one is no fun, especially no. if you got a lot of windows up. <laughs> yep. Just find the toolbar. That's the key. All right. Adam uh, is satisfied. Good job. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, guys. I'm going to uh, have Steve come back in, and he is going to uh, stop this recording, and, and it will probably be up, if I had to guess, probably this evening at some time. Uh, Okay, wait, one other guys. question here. Yeah. I have interactive I'll brokers account. Have it up later today. Okay, one other question is I have a broker, uh, interactive brokers account. Do you recommend linking to Holly to automate traders? That's going to be up to you, uh, Olu. Um, uh, well, we, we, quick, quick, we should, I think we've oh, asked if you right. can automate Holly's trades, and, and the, 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 no. the short answer is no, you cannot automate ho Holly trades. Um, and, then, and by the way, the, this interactive brokers auto trading is uh, definitely a topic for the more advanced uh, classes that we have. But since we're here and you're asking, um, you can automate trades through interactive brokers with a premium trade ideas account, but you cannot automate Holly trades. You have to, you can only automate your own custom strategies. But great question. And that'll, that'll be a great question to bring up in our advanced session on Thursday, 401 with Jamie and myself. Mm-hmm. All right, Olu. Well, you're welcome. We're glad we got that for you. And uh, yeah, Andy, I think uh, I think we could probably uh, call it a call it a day here. We got Steve here ready to uh, to walk us out. Sure. All right, guys. <laughs> thank you very much. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow in um, uh, TI two hundred one. Piano music. All right. Have a great day. <laughs>